treaties, and we've had probably six or seven of these, starting with the Stockholm, the Rio, the Kyoto, and now it's Copenhagen. I think they're good markers of the progress that we have made. None of them were perfect. Copenhagen is not going to be perfect, but it still marks an evolution of our understanding of sustainability and its importance. And I think it also reflects a level of urgency because all the other nations are there. Uh, there is a lot of public participation now, so it's not just a matter of policymakers talking to each other or the, uh, the scientists talking to each other where much of the conversation on global climate change began. Today it's become a general discourse. Regular people in their homes are concerned about it, want to engage in it. And to me, that is really the measure of success, that it, the conversation has spilled out from domains of expertise to the general public. And there is no going back. Even if we don't get an agreement in Copenhagen, I think the pressure will remain and we'll come back to it. And it might not happen in a big treaty, but we will see that uh, big governments, China, India, and the United States will have to take action on it. You know, at some point it gets beyond politics. People start realizing this is real, it's happening in my backyard, I can see the changes. And uh, so to me, all the education and all the uh, public uh, awareness campaigns that have gone along with Copenhagen, that to me is the big benefit of these summits.